So I want to cover real quickly the dividend yield. Uh, it's a term that's used a lot. It's a way to measure the dividend as a percentage that you're getting off of owning a company or a stock. So simply put, the dividend yield is a percentage that measures what a company is paying out in dividends each year relative to its stock price. So you're basically taking the amount of money a company pays shareholders, the dividend, and you're dividing that by the current stock price to get a current yield price. And we'll go over what that means and compare a couple of different um, companies, company A and company B. Uh, but just to understand that you're trying to express as a percentage yield what the dividend might be paying. And again, dividends aren't guaranteed, but they're one way that you make money in the market besides just the price per share going up. If you're getting a dividend and you don't need to spend that money as income, maybe you're not retired yet, or maybe you are retired and you, you do, don't need the income off of that, that gets reinvested back in and buys more shares. Sometimes the shares of that company may be down in price and that dividend is buying more shares. So it is important, especially when we go through periods of time where we're in a low interest rate environment where maybe CDs are one, two, three percent on certificate deposits at the bank, maybe savings accounts are zero to a half a percent. Dividends can become even more important because a good quality company might be cranking out a three, four, five percent dividend just for owning their stock. Again, dividends aren't guaranteed. They fluctuate with the market and the economy, but they are a big part of a return of a portfolio. So a couple of examples, uh, but one other thing I wanted to touch on before we go over the examples is there's a difference in dividend growers versus dividend payers. So dividend payers are traditionally those companies, uh, they've been around forever and ever. They're profitable enterprises. They pay a big dividend. Sometimes maybe they pay a six, seven, eight, ten percent dividend, but they're typically not growing those dividends every year. Those dividends tend to be much more static, very predictable, but much more static and not increasing because of the maturity of the company. Where dividend growers might be some companies even in different industries that you wouldn't even think of, like technology where maybe they're paying a half a percent dividend, a 1% dividend or a 2% dividend, but quarter after quarter or year after year, they have shown over the past years an increasing uh, dividend history. So they're increasing their dividend sometimes pretty dramatically, and that can help you gain income later years when you might need them versus dividend uh, you know, payers that tend to be more static and maybe the dividends aren't going to keep up with the cost of living or the inflation that we probably will face down the road. So an example, company A, again, we're going to take the annual dividends that the company pays per share and we're going to divide it by the current price that it's selling for in the market. So in company A, let's assume that company A is $20 a share in the market if you want to go buy that stock. And let's assume that they pay dividends of a dollar per share. Now that's on an annual basis. So a lot of companies pay quarterly dividends. So of course you would divide that by four for what you would actually get paid out on a quarterly basis. But to keep the math simple, we're just going to assume an annual dividend and the current price per share. In doing that, one divided by 20 one dollar, excuse me, divided by 20, you're basically looking at a 5% dividend yield. So in other words, as expressed as a percentage, that is the dividend that is getting paid on this stock. Company B is selling at a price per share in the current market of $40 per share. And they pay also the same annual dividend of the $1 per share. So on every share of their stock out there that you and tons of other investors own, they're paying out $1 per share of dividends. Their annual dividend yield would only be 2.5%, the dollar divided by the, the, the $40, because they are paying the same dividend per share, but you're having to pay more to buy their stock. 
So you're getting a 2.5% dividend yield. So just a simple way to look at the dividends that companies pay and to think about rising dividends versus decreasing dividends. To think about the role that rising dividends or dividend payers uh, have in your portfolio. That being said, dividend payers are typically going to pay the larger dividends, but probably not going to offer much in the growth of dividends. Where dividend growers may pay a lower dividend today, but have a track record and a recent history of being uh, very bent on increasing those dividends, which could help you later with inflation and the cost of living increases later in life.